How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. So growing up, I was really a big fan of graffiti. I just, I was a big graffiti kid. And so I decided to actually explore graffiti a little bit more and make a course out of it. And so in this course, you'll learn how to create augmented reality graffiti art. We will first do some research on what style of graffiti we want to create. We will use the rendering process to sketch, ink, and color our graffiti art on sticker paper to stick anywhere. And lastly, we'll make our graffiti come to life with augmented reality using the Unity game engine. And so if you want to go down this wonderful journey, you can find out more at stuckonanisland.com slash courses. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon, from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, Follow me on all the social nets. Welcome to the course on augmented graffiti art. The agenda for this course is split up into two parts. And so first we'll be focused on making a graffiti sticker or what they call a slap. And before we get that started, we're going to look at what is graffiti. Then we're gonna find out how to use and find references. And then we will learn how to make the sticker. So we're just going through the rendering process. And then in part two, we'll learn how to augment that graffiti sticker. And so how to bring the sticker to life with AR and use the Unity Editor to, uh, to do that. And so this will be a lovely journey that I'm excited to take you on. And so the tools you'll need uh, for part one are obviously pencil and paper, uh, computer, some uh, pens, markers, and coloring tools, as well as sticker paper. And then for part two, you'll want the Unity Game Engine, Vuforia Engine SDK for the AR stuff, a digital version of your sticker, and then either a webcam or a mobile phone. Uh, when we're doing the AR stuff, we will actually be testing it with a webcam, not a mobile phone. But if you know how to build to a device, that works too. Okay, so what is graffiti? Graffiti comes from the Italian word graffiato, which means scratched. It describes a work of art produced by scratching a design into a surface. It is the mastering of handwritten and visual art, or at least a combination of that, and it's also a way to control public space. Uh, and this often is a staple of hip hop in black American culture. And so when we're looking at the definition, right? Uh, instead of sort of scratching into a surface, literally, uh, they often use paint. And in many ways, the idea of using space and using visuals and handwriting you know it, it, it's garnered a, a following it's garnered an identity and 
uh, in many ways, it, it's a it's a way to communicate ideas in a in a creative fashion. And so we think about sort of like murals with murals with messages that are that are very personal, and essentially that's graffiti. And so let's look at some examples of graffiti and how graffiti is used to make a statement. And so the first style is called tags and it's simple, it's easy. And, uh, for many, it's what began the movement. And usually it's an artist's name or an identifier written in one color. And so it's probably the simplest thing, just spray paint, or just line work. The second style is a what they consider a throw up, and it's slightly more detailed, uh, and it has more colors, and usually has a a bubble style to the writing. And then we have the blockbuster, and the blockbuster is it's big and blocky and it covers a large area in a short period of time. And so it's not as much detailed as it is bold. And then wild style. A wild style is just a very elaborate version of the throw up style. And it's much harder to read, but it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing. And it has letters, curves, arrows, spikes, and other iconic graffiti elements that we know and appreciate and often recognize. We have heaven, which isn't really a style as much as it is a, an approach to an installation. And so what heaven is, is really just tagging that is placed in really difficult access points. So the top of buildings, behind freeways, Really, it's the the reason it's admired is because of how difficult it is to get to it. And so, you know, artists that create with this approach, uh, they're, they're admired because of how much of a feat it is to pull it off. Then we have the stencil style which is one of the more iconic styles that led to mainstream adoption. We think of Banksy, we think of a, just a variety like Obey, uh, and uh, artists essentially use paper and cardboard to spray the images, and it's really easy to replicate those images and, and install them because they're already pre-made. And then we have the paste-up. The paste-up is essentially a poster that is made at home and you sort of paste it everywhere. And so very similar to this, to the stencil, but this is not requiring any sort of paint. You already had those things ready and you just stick them in places. And then we have the slaps and slaps are very similar to paste ups. And these are essentially stickers made from postage labels that can be very elaborate or they can be very simple. You could tag on these or you can make nice iconography and you can mix the styles as much as you possible. It's really all about expressing yourself in the medium and then slapping it someplace. And so these are the ones that we'll actually be creating in this course. We have the piece which is a style that's pretty elaborate. It's, a, it's an elegant approach to the art form. And this is one of the reasons why graffiti has been adopted um, across cultures is because of the approach to the art form and the art that's created from it. And so it consists of hand painting masterpieces that involve multiple colors and take fairly long to make. And so, great artists that are able to balance the time and the expertise and then also the location uh, are the ones that are the most iconic. Then we have a 3D style and this is pretty new uh, relative to the other styles 
and it's all about creating 3D illusions of a third dimension on walls and roads. And this is not actually creating 3D work, but it's the illusion of 3D on something that is flat. And so it's all a matter of perspective for, for many. And so now that we have an idea of what graffiti is, the different styles and stuff like that, it's time to make graffiti art. And so what we'll do is we'll start by creating some graffiti slaps with sticker paper. So before we begin creating our graffiti, we'll want to find references. And so finding references and, and planning stuff out is probably the best thing that you could do right now when you're trying to figure out what you want to create. And that's mainly because going into a project like this, you want to need some direction. Um, it doesn't have to be a lot of direction, but you just want to, want to know, like, have an idea of what you want to create. And so I like to start off with just a sentence or two describing what what it is, and then I'll use a tool uh, to create a mood board from images on the internet. And so I like to use this program called Pure Refs, uh, but alternatives are Google Docs or Pinterest or Milano. So here we are with Pure Refs, and Pure Refs is uh, a great drag and drop program that works for Mac and PC and it's open source and you essentially are able to make mood boards with it and it works with a lot of different platforms and software. I, I completely love it because it allows me to jot down my ideas and, and create some interesting stuff really easily. And so you could just go through, you could download it, if you want to donate an amount, you can. If you don't want to donate, you could just go to here and click zero for free and you can download it. Pretty easy, but I would highly suggest you uh, check it out. Otherwise, you could go to Pinterest or Google or any of those. And so I have Pure Refs up right here. And I'll start looking at graffiti. Okay, so with this, I have my I have a Google Doc up, and I'll use Pure Refs for my images. But with the Google Doc, I'll just say I want to create my name. So create a graffiti style name, and I want to make it as a graffiti slap. And I kind of like the wild style. Just like that. And so now I could go, now that I have an idea of what I want, I could start looking at Google and looking for just different, different styles of letters. So I could say graffiti style letters. And say, okay. These are, these are some really cool ones. So I like these and I just drag them over. Like that. And Pure S is really, really easy, really easy. And say, I want to possibly do something like that. So I'll drag that over. Really like this one. This is cool. Got a mix of pictures. It's really cool. I like this lettering style. It looks really nice. 
So I could go through and organize these. And voila, so I have my a graffiti style stickers. And I have my ideas right here. So these are my references. I think these are pretty good references. And have my my plan so I'm gonna make a name uh, in sort of a wild style and so now after you have your references uh, well first just plan out what you want to make with the few thumbnails on scratch paper and then we'll sketch out the final design on sticker paper and we'll ink the design uh, color the design give the design any effects and cut the design out and then we'll share it with the world and then we have our slap that we could create and, and share with others okay so we're going to thumbnail our graffiti design and so we're going to take a sheet of paper and we're going to really just sketch and jot down uh, possible designs for a final graffiti art piece and so we just need a sheet of paper and a pencil that's all you need and we'll go ahead and get it started and so now right I have my paper right here and I got my pencil and the main thing is I wanted to create something that is my uh, based off of my name and so I'll go through and first I'll just say my name is Steve like that and so there's a couple of things that I could do but look back at my artboard I have a lot of different designs that I could try out and implement and so I have a couple of S's right here I have something that I'll actually make a little bigger I got this crazy design I got this design this is actually pretty cool I really like this S and so what I could do is I could start sketching out different ideas so big picture, I could go through and I could say, I want the overall shape of it to be sort of down and up. And then it gets sort of jagged. And do like that. And that's kind of the shape that we have here. And that tends to be pretty consistent, right? Where we have like big sides here it gets sort of skinny and then it gets bigger and I think I, I kind of like that and if I wanted to have like an S I'll try to have an S here and I could actually make it a little blockier so I could just make squares and have those squares be connected to the lines that I have. And so now it went from a line work to uh, something that's blocky, blocky. And then if I wanted to add some arrows, I could add some arrows to it and add some more arrows here. And so now I have uh, something that's a little more, it has a little, it's a little bolder, it has some style to it. And I could continue doing that with the T or I just block it out. If I wanted to make it, you know, give it a little bit more edge, as you can see in this, it has a little bit more edge. I could make those lines a little bit thicker.
like that. If I wanted to add an arrow to it, you just add an arrow to it. Like that. And so on and so forth. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look and say, okay, what is the overall shape that I kind of want? And how can I do that? I kind of like that. That's pretty cool. It's like I could have a I could have a big S. And then I could have a small T and a small E. And then I could have a big V and then a small E. And I think I, I kind of like that, I like having the having the T be something, and maybe the T could come out here and sort of be the barrier between it. And then maybe I could sort of give this. Hmm, I could, I could have that be like the tip of an arrow or something. Some arrows there. Hmm. You know, I have, a, I have a lot of ideas that I can play around with. I think, uh, let's see here. Select some arrows. Maybe have, so I have, maybe if I had the arrows go like that. Got some ideas here. And so I think I'm going to settle with, you know, having the large V, but then moving over to having the S sort of have this mark right here. Pretty much one arrow going to the other. And then, uh, and then having the T sort of have an arrow come out like that. Yeah, this should be this should be fun. This should be fun. And so it, it did deviate from this a little bit, but I think it'll I think it works out. And so now that I have my sketch, it's time to go to the inking. Or time to go to the uh, transfer. And so now what we're going to do now that we have uh, a bunch of ideas for thumbnails for our sketch, what we can do is we can actually get some sticker paper and we can sketch our design. So we'll pick from different elements of our thumbnail and on our design sheet, and then we're gonna incorporate that into the design for our sticker. And again, we're gonna use pencil, but instead of using regular paper, we're gonna use a sticker paper. And so I have my sketch here, right? My sketch is here, and I have my uh, sticker paper. And so, because I'm left-handed, I'll just move this over to the side so that I can see it. 
and I have my sticker paper here. And so what I'm going to do is one, first make sure that I'm drawing on the right side. And the best way to do that is making sure that you have, making sure that you can test it by peeling it up. There you go. And so now, making sure that this is the sticky side that I'm drawing on and not the smooth side. Because the smooth side doesn't do much for you. So now we have know which side we're uh, drawing on. Then I will lightly, and pretty much I just want to do this lightly, just sort of have, write down my name. And we just want to have that written lightly so that I can see the possibilities. Cool, so I have a light sketch right here. And I have it where, you know, we have an arrow here. We have an arrow here at the end. We have some sort of connection. I think that I could add an arrow here too. a little bit of an arc. I don't know, I just, I just kind of, like I like that arc. And that arc turning into something else. And so, now that we have that, let's go ahead and start adding some more details to it. And so, you can start adding more details by giving it a little bit more depth. So coming out, Like that.
turn through. So we got this interesting, interesting little S that's sort of forming. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding extra elements to it. You know, adding an extra outline to it. And seeing what the flow of the, the characters looks like. Maybe I could add like an extra little element here. And it's really just to, to break it up, but then also make it look a little bit bolder. So instead of it being skinny lines, we have these extra lines that, that really enhance it. So I think it's all about being expressive. Now, I'm spending a lot of time on this, this S, but I think the S is the starting character, and so this really sets the tone for the image. And so I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good S right there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of detail in it. In, Again, starting off with my thumbnails, it wasn't a lot of detail. I just wanted to make sure that I got the ideas down. So I went from here all the way down to here, and I ended up with here. And so now, this is the S that I got. It looks really cool. So now that I spent time with the S, I can start going, going to the others. And so I can either use this V right here, because I know the V is another part. So since I have this laid out, I know I have an idea of what, how much space this is going to take. And so with the V, I know the V is going to be the second most prominent, prominent character. And so with that, what I'll do is I'll just follow that line here. And I'll give it a little bit more depth. Here, I'll bring it up. Like that. And then it'll come down as this interesting looking arrow. And so what did I I kinda wanna I kinda wanna split it up a little bit. So I kinda wanna make sure that people understand that this is a V. And so what I could do is I could actually just cut this up. So I'll just give it a, I'll give it a slash like that, just to, at an angle. And I could give it another slash at another, this other angle here. And maybe have this slash come out a little bit more. And give it just a little more, give it a little more volume. I could possibly have it come down a little bit more. Like that.
like that. So it's turning out pretty decent. I may have to go through and fix it a little bit more when I start to ink it. But it looks pretty decent so far. I could possibly add this other element here just to give it a little more volume. There you go. So it looks pretty, looks pretty trippy. So I wonder, what if I actually took the spike? Yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So I could split up the arrow a little bit more as well. And again, these are all, this is all sketching. So uh, some things may change, but we have a, I have a V now. And so we're sort of coming through this pretty, pretty smoothly. I'm pretty pleased with it. And so the next ones that I have are the the V and the the or the T and the E's. And so since the T is a little the second or the third most prominent one, I'll go ahead and do that one. And what I could do is I could say, okay, I know that it starts here, and so I can sort of create this curve and give it a give it an edge like a spike like this is. I could bring it down. Have it come down. Yeah, and I kind of like that, how it sort of has an arc here. So I'll probably try to keep that. So I have this arc. Bring this sort of angle down. So change that a little bit, have it fit. It's adding little elements to it, right? And these little elements are giving you an opportunity to Essentially, just bring it to life a little bit more. And so I have the arrow, and the arrow sort of comes down a little bit more than I anticipated or expected to, but I think that it works a little bit better. And so a little bit more there, a bit more here, probably fill in the space here. And fill in this space here. And 
And so the, lastly, because I have my T already, and what I could do is I could give, put a little bit more detail into that T. Yeah, like that. I could just add this into it. And it just adds a little, a little more character to it. Like that. I could possibly split this up and split that up as well. And so lastly, we have our two E's. And so what I'll do is I'll essentially use the ease to fill in the space. And so follow the contours that we have with the space that's provided. And this is where I could just start blocking stuff out. So I could block it out like that. Like that. This one kind of comes up. I can get pretty intricate with my designs with the E. And with this one, I could get a little more interesting with this one as well. I could incorporate this. I could incorporate this. I could say that this sort of goes into the E. Yeah, I suppose I can. Yeah, that would be actually really nice. So you could say that this sort of goes into the E like this, and I could give it a little bit of space. So we sort of have this art coming up here. So I come down. Come down like that. And rarely do I ever, rarely am I ever erasing with these. I'm normally just putting more lines over other lines, but sometimes I will erase. And if I do, then I'll just erase very minimally. Uh, but for the most part, things have turned out pretty good. So I'll sort of play around with these designs, play around with the ideas. I like this triangle that sort of comes up and comes down. Like 
like that. And so I'll have it, this will be a stub that comes out like that. Boom, boom, boom. And I think I could add, really just like a star or something like that. I could just add a, a nice a nice star. when you're creating it, right? You always want to make something. You have to sketch it first. And then once you sketch it, then you start adding the details to it. And I think adding the details like that, it really informs what I could add to, uh, to the actual shapes. So now that I have that, I could go through, add more of this, give it a little more character there, and a little more character there, like that. So I kind of had this space here. I think what I want to do is I want to add a little more depth to it, like that. Boom. So now what I have is I have my, my graffiti sketch. So the S, I have the T. E, V, and the E, then I added a star here. And I think that really works. Adding that star. I think that star is the, the final piece. And so yeah, that's a, that's what I have in terms of a sketch. It's a, it turned out pretty good. Got some details in it. I think I'll, I think I'll add another little detail here just to, just cause like I, I really like adding these details into it. Okay. Try not to add any more details to it uh, because it's it's really easy to just sort of build on what I already created and then adding to it again <laughs> and make it even even more awesome. And so that's what I have. This is my this is my sketch. And so now it's time to go in and ink it. So now that we have our sketch designed and on our sticker paper. The next thing that we can do is we could ink it. And so I'll go through with a bold marker or an ink pen. And all you have to do is just trace over the sketch lines that you want to keep and preserve. And then afterwards, you'll erase the rest of it. And then we'll move on to the next step. And so with this, you could add more creativity to it. You could add more details. Or if you don't, you could just go through and in many ways, just trace over the lines that you did. And 
Uh, and I just really enjoy that. And so for this, I will go through, get my ink, and we will move on to it. For this, I have a lot of ink pens. I just make a lot of ink drawings. And so what I like to do is I like to grab an ink pen that is, uh, isn't going to smear as much. And so I'll try out a few, see if they work. If they don't, I'll just move on to another one. If all else fails, you could always just go with a Sharpie. And so playing around with different line weights is always good. Uh, but if you only have one pen, you could stick with the Sharpie or whatever. So I don't want brush pens. I want something that's kind of a fine tip. A little too fine. I guess the Sharpie will work. And so with it, I'll just go through and start moving and using the line work.
And that's pretty much the S right there. I got the S. And so now it's time to hit the T, the V, and the E. And then ultimately, I'll hit all the stuff around it as well. Some of the lines aren't turning out as clean as I want them to, but I think with all the details combined, it really makes for an interesting composition. But for now, I'll just go on to the E. So I have the E, and I'll move on to the V.
So I have the V, the V kind of goes up and down and I added some extra stuff to it. And then I'll finish with the E, that's the last letter. And so now I have the E done, and I have the star done as well. And what I could do is I could add a little bit extra details. So I'll add these details here. that I'll add a line here and I'll add a line here as well and this is what we have this is our sketch what I did is I separated this line right here uh, so I, I might have to add some white out or whatever to it to make it uh, to really make it look like it's separated but for the most part, I'm pretty pleased with what I was able to do with this right here. And I also have made a little bit of a mistake there, but such is life. It's never going to be perfect. So now the next thing that I could do is just erase all the lines I don't want. And so I have my eraser here. I'll go through and I'll just clean it up a little bit by erasing the pencil line so it doesn't mess up my... coloring and the beauty of inking is that it's not really going to smear really the pencil lines are the things that smear and make it look kind of murky and so erasing these makes it look a little cleaner And 
not to erase too hard because you might mess up the paper. Might bend the paper and stuff. We don't want that. Okay, so that's what I got now. And so now we can go on to coloring. And so now what we have is we have our coloring session. And so we'll color our design and we'll use either markers or crayons or color pencils or any other coloring tools to color the design. And I'll show you real quickly, if you don't know where to start with color to build a, a palette, uh, there are some great tools you could use to figure that out. Okay, so here I am with Adobe Color. Adobe Color is a great place to uh, get some ideas for colors. And so it allows you to find themes and analogous colors and explore. So you can find trends, which are great from the community. You can go to the Explore tab. Uh, really a lot of stuff that you could do. Even if you have your libraries, right? You could find your libraries and go from there as well. So you might not have the exact colors that they, they reference, but having a color palette of, you know, maybe a red, a blue, a green, all that would be good. And what you could do is you could look for um, different opportunities to uh, build color palettes based off of words and stuff. So if I want to say summertime, I could type in summertime, and it gives me these palettes that I can look into, right? So like gold, yellow, blue, uh, sort of beach, island colors, fruit colors, all types of stuff. And so let me see if I could type in my name. So Steve, not Streve, I'll say Steve. It's like, oh snap, there's actually color palettes for Steve. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's actually really interesting. I actually might like these. So what I'll go through and I'll say, I want, um, I like a color palette with a blue and a, and a gold. Or I like, a, I like color palettes with blue. Ooh, I like this one right here. Yeah. So I like this palette right here, and a uh, good trouble main title. I, I, you know, this this works for me. Where I have a gold, I have a blue, and it, it really is paying homage to, uh, you know, John Lewis, which made just a iconic black figure that uh, paved the way for you know many black creators to just express themselves, and uh, you know, I have his graphic novel March about his life and so I, I think a, a great way to pay homage is to to use these and so I have my dark blue I have my light blue I have a, a gold a tan and a like a burgundy or whatever and so I think I could use those and so based on what I have here right I have my colors so you can use any colors that you want but uh, these are the ones that I have, and so I have kind of a, I have a burgundy, I have a sort of a, a gold, and a, like a tan, so I have these two colors, I have a light blue right here, and then I have a darker blue right here. So these colors right here. I think uh, actually maybe I'll switch out the blue to like a periwinkle. Yeah. I think I like periwinkle because of just because of nothing other than that. And so yeah, so I have uh, so I have these colors right here. And so now 
now let's actually get to coloring. And so much like the inking process, all you're doing is just finding the different areas that you want to color. And so what I'll do is I'll start with, uh, I'll start with my thing right here. And I'll just get my star. Got the star. And then I'll say I'll have the T, like the extra stuff, be the burgundy. Above that arrow, that arrow. And then I'll have this arrow, which is pretty much the whole, uh, the whole S I'll have be burgundy. So yeah, I'll make the arrows be burgundy. So I think that's pretty good for the for the burgundy right now. So now let me mix it up with uh, some cool. So I'll mix it up with the cool color. And I'll do that for the for the this E and the T. You want to have a balance with these colors. Don't want it to be heavily dark or heavily. Uh, warm. You add some cool colors that are a little lighter as well. And normally I try to like shade and stuff but for this not too worried about it. I'll just lay the colors down flat because the effects and stuff, the shading, the effects I could come later. Got the E. Like that. And then I'll say the other one, the periwinkle. I'll have for this right here. I 
and I'll have it for this and a few other things. I think what I'll do before that is I'll take this this gold and I'll add it here. And I'll add it here and I'll add it here. Like this and this. It's perfect for it. And so I can start adding some more details here. If you go back and say, okay, so we're getting some of these, this, that, definitely this spot right here. Get that spot as well. So I have this spot. That. that one probably have a little more blue it's not a lot of blue in this like that mm. Oh no, I think the I think the last ones that I can do, I could just black it out. So I could have black here and change this to black. And then I'm gonna add black here as well. And so there is my there is my my colored design right there. So that was that wasn't too bad. It's just all about creating some stuff, right? As you can see, it doesn't really bleed through. But we have our design. So now that we have our design done and it's colored, it's time to add some effects. And so I'd like to add some white to it and you know make it pop just a little bit, uh, clean up some edges. Uh, really just give it a, that defining factor. I have this pen called a Uniball Signo, and this is a white pen that allows me to add some uh, interesting effects to things. And so what I'll do is I'll add some effects here, then I'll make some of the lines bolder, and then we'll go from there. What I'll do is I'll kind of clean this up, so I'll add some white there so that it's separated. I'll add some white here. So that's separated as well. So we'll add imperfections. I'll go here. As you can see, it sort of lays down like white out, so it's really nice, really nice.
And so what I'm doing here is I'm going through and I'm just adding just a, a white outline to all the angles that are facing in the, the right corner here. So just adding an outline just gives it a little bit more depth. And we are about done. Yeah. And it's really all about creating some effects with these, right? And so what I did is I created um, some interesting effects by just adding some extra white lines to it. And so it made the, the black lines a little thinner, but what it did is it allowed for some extra uh, some extra intricacies like that and since this is on an angle too I'll go ahead and add more to that oh, yeah So you could go through, you could add some extra lines to it. I think having these three lines that you add to it, it really adds a little bit more character to it. Just something simple, right? Just three simple lines. Maybe even a line right there. Having like a dot.
like that, it just goes a long way when you just start adding simple elements. So what if I added this here? that then say three lines and then the top here I'll just have a dot and so with that right you can make things look really really dynamic with uh with just the extra white pen adding some effects and from there you have a uh, you have your design you have your sticker and it turns out pretty nicely i'm pretty pleased with it So the last two ideas are really cutting it out and with that, just taking scissors or an X-Acto knife to contour the edges. And when you finish that, you can go ahead and share the sticker with the world because the sticker is done. And so with it, you could stick it anywhere. You could peel it off. You could do a whole bunch of stuff that you want with it. And so with it, I'm not going to actually cut it out just because... I plan on using it for augmenting. And so uh, glad you're able to go down the process with me. It's definitely been fun just being able to create in a way that uh, allows me to use markers and use my rendering process and use some of the software that I like to do. And uh, in many ways, it can be therapeutic. I think that uh, graffiti, you know, for me, like growing up in hip hop culture and stuff, it, it really allowed for me to reconnect with my roots in a way. And so hopefully this was helpful for you to, to go from a, a simple sketch design with some thumbnails and then actually coming out with something like this. And, you know, following the process, it's really simple. You really put the pen to the paper, you sketch out some thumbnails, have a mood board, you figure out what you want to create, and then from there you sketch it on paper, then you sketch it on sticker paper, you add some ink to it, and then after you add some ink to it, then you want to add some color to it. And then you can do whatever you want afterwards. You could cut it out, you could share it, you could post it, and all that good jazz. Now we're off to the second part of this which is how to augment the graffiti sticker or the graffiti slap. And so with your sticker made, it's time to make it come to life. Think about the things that you want to make come to life and we'll create a list of features for a roadmap. Then we'll digitize the graffiti sticker. We'll set up the Unity game engine. We'll install Vuforia. We will create an AR image target based off of our sticker. We'll build some assets with this package called Pro Builder. We'll color them with this other package called Polybrush and use some custom materials. We will kit bash other assets as well to really make it come to life. And then we will animate the experience with the timeline and give it some more visual effects and sounds and stuff. So uh, in part two, this is, this is what we're gonna be doing, really making the graffiti sticker come to life and excited to take you on this journey now. So before we get started, let's look at some examples of how augmented reality can be used to bring graffiti art to life. And so here's a trailer for uh, some of the AR work that I've done, especially with print media. And really it's all about having sounds, animation, uh, visual effects, and really some interactions as well. It's really, Anything that you would see on a screen, you could, you could create with an AR experience, particularly with 
graffiti. And so with this, what you saw is not only 3D models, 2D animation, 3D animation, particle effects, sounds, PNG sequences, all types of stuff. And so you could add all of that to your uh, graffiti stickers to create these really immaculate uh, experiences with art. And so I'm excited to take you on this journey to exploring that. And not only exploring it, but implementing it into the work that you're doing. Because the technology is there, it's what's holding you back is really just the ideas that you want to explore. And so first things first, right? We want to build a roadmap and create a list of features you want to include into your AR experience. That's the first thing that we want to do. And so with my, with my design, right? So I have my, my sticker over here. And I have my list of uh, my Word document or my Google Doc. It doesn't matter which one that you want to use. You could uh, use really any text processor. And so with it, I'll say that uh, I want the features that I have to be, you know, having 3D models. So 3D text. And then I'll say, maybe have some of it spinning and glowing. I want the, maybe some arrows and stars. I want a looping beat. And because it's so intricate, I think it would be cool to have the, really the, the different elements come in kind of like transformer, you know, pieces. So, uh, so looping in and out the in and out like pieces of a puzzle. And then I'll have some like, you know, maybe some fireworks or something. Some like fireworks and explosions. Like that. I don't know. Those are some things I could just think about. But really this gives me an idea of what I can do or want to do with it. And, uh, and I think that that's a, that's a good way to start. And so the next thing that I could do is I want to digitize the sticker. And so creating a digital copy of my sticker, uh, will allow me to do some really interesting things with it. And so since I have my webcam here and you can use this with a phone or anything like that as well, uh, I'll just try to flatten this out as much as I possibly can. I'll make sure that the, the lighting looks good. And what I could do is I could take a picture of it. Either like this, just taking a nice picture.
And after I do that, because I have this sort of scan feature here, which is really cool, I could use that. And I'll click save. And after I save it, I have my, I have my picture here. Really nice. So now I can just send it to myself. And so I'll go through, find the picture that I just created. And I could just email it to myself. And it's sent. And so now with my graffiti sticker, right? I could go in, I could open it with Photoshop or any photo editor that you want. And I could just go in and clean it up again. And for this, you don't need Photoshop. I just like to use Photoshop just because, you know, it just gives me more control over my image. And I could rotate it. So image rotation. Actually, I don't want that. I want it to be rotating 180 degrees like that. I want it to I'll trim the edges just a little bit more. I could trim up here, and then I'll trim it down like that. I'll trim it down like that. There you go. And there's a little bit of contrast here. I mean, I suppose I can I can make it. I'll change the curves a little bit. So I'll say that this is the white part and this is the black part here, like that. So it really makes it bold. Yeah, that's the color I want. Yep, just like that. So notice how now the colors really pop. And this one looks a little white, so just make this wider. And it, it just makes this thing really pop right now. I'm pretty pleased with it. And so now I have my I have my stuff, so I could go through and I could go export. I could save this as just a PSD. And then I'll go through and I'll export and save it as a JPEG. As a JPEG, I'll have it be, we'll say about 30%. 30% is always pretty solid. Um, and the scale is pretty solid too. I uh, don't have any complaints. Uh, uh, I would say, yeah, I think this is pretty solid. So I'll just click export and I'll save this as a graffiti sticker underscore edited. And I'll click OK. And so now, what I had was, I had this, and I could show you what it looks like when it's rotated. I had this, and now I have that, just by digitizing it. So going from there, which is the picture we took, to that. It really makes the colors pop. And so now it's time to move on to the other stuff. Okay, so the next thing that we have is to set up our Unity game engine. And this is gonna be really simple. Uh, we're not gonna go into all the details of uh, how Unity works. This isn't an intro 
So you should be familiar with how to set up Unity already, but we'll go ahead and do it just as a brief overview. And so I, I'm at unity.com and the first thing to do is just go to unity.com if you don't already have the Unity editor set up already. And you go through and you click get started. And instead of going to teams, you could go to individual. Uh, and with the individual tab, you're able to go to personal. If you're a student, you can apply for the student version, but it doesn't happen immediately. And so what I can do is I can go here. And then if it's your first time using Unity, you could use, uh, you could click first time user and start here, or you could go to go here and pretty much they do the same thing. Uh, and so I wouldn't worry too much about which one you choose to be honest with you. So if you go here, you just agree to the terms and you click download Unity Hub and then it'll start downloading. I already have it. And so uh, the other things you could do is uh, there's a lot of courses and you know asset store stuff, which we'll dive deeper into later on. And so once you finish downloading Unity and installing it, what it's actually gonna install is the Unity Hub. And so with the Unity Hub, uh, you have, this is your one-stop shop for all the stuff that is required for your Unity uh, projects. So you have your projects tab where you create new projects. You have the learn tab where you can learn more about how to use Unity and how to create games with tutorials and starter projects. The community has the blog and the forums and all that stuff. And then installs is where you download all your installs. And so the way Unity Hub works is it, in, it installs different Unity versions of the editor that you sort of use for your projects. And then this is sort of the one-stop shop for the, in the Unity Hub for it. So you go to add and you can click recommended releases if you want. Uh, well, actually I would suggest clicking recommended release and just getting the latest one. I already have the latest one installed. Uh, but after you finish that, uh, if you want to use a, a official release, you can, but um, unless it's one of the previous versions, I would always choose the recommended version. And so from there, what you want to do is you want to click next, and then you want to make sure to have your developer tools installed, uh, checked, and then Android build support and iOS build support. And so after that, you click next, and then you agree to all the terms. So here, you agree to the terms, you agree to the terms for this, and then you click done. Since I already have this installed, I'm not gonna actually do that. I'm gonna exit out of it. And then it'll install and it'll create a Unity version or show you a Unity editor version with your different modules here installed as well. And so with that, I'll go back to projects and with projects, I can create a new project. And so I'll go to the arrow sign right here, click that, and I'll click the latest version of Unity that I have and I'll go through and I'll say Unity, or I'll say Graffiti Sticker, like that. And with that, I'll, there's different templates that you could choose. Make sure to choose 3D because that's the base template that we want to start off with. Uh, there's other templates you could use, but we don't need to use those. And so I'll go through, click Create. And so now that we have our Unity version or editor open, um, what we could do is we could set sub, we could have some stuff set up already. So we go to file and then build settings, and we want to make sure that it's uh, going to either Android or iOS platform, uh, because that's the environment that works best for AR. And so it doesn't really work best with a like a PC or Mac it works best with the Android or iOS. So if you have iOS, and uh, like an iOS phone, an iPhone, you could choose this. If you, otherwise I would just choose Android because it's just the easiest one to, to navigate right now. So I'll switch platform. And you'll see that there's the Unity icon here to tell us that this is the platform that we have on. And then I'll click player settings and I can go down to where it says color space and I can change that to linear. That just makes the colors a little bit better. And I can go to quality 
and what instead of it saying ultra we'll want it to say medium and that makes it uh the assets and everything just more optimized so it's just a better thing to do and so i'll exit out of those um i'll go into my scenes and before you get started you'll see that like there's a hierarchy which has all of our uh, game objects and the game objects are just different components that uh use that are in our inspector and so you can see in our inspector we see that the camera component has uh, the main camera has a camera component and then the directional light has a light component and you can add different components to it to uh, give it more features but essentially they're all just standard game objects so create a game object and each one of these game objects is the same just they have different components to give them different features and so inspector gives us all of our uh, settings and information for our, our game objects we have our projects tab here which gives us all of the assets and and files in our project then we have our scene view which is sort of the standardized view to uh to create in call it the viewport and then we have the game view which is pretty much the view that the can the main camera shows and so this is essentially what people would see when they open up your experience whereas this this is the uh the game view that we could actually change so we can make it bigger we can go up down all that stuff and so if you want to control the the game view you could just move the main camera around and that's pretty much it the one thing that we like to do is we'll see we have sample scene here and that's why we have our scenes i could right click and create a new scene and i'll just call this graffiti art and then i'll just open it and i the best practice is to create a new scene and don't try to build off of the sample scene create a new scene and then use that uh, for your projects now that we have unity installed and set up it's time to install our vuforia engine sdk and all this is going to do is allow us to do ar stuff but then also have those features be available to test on our webcam uh, again we're not going to be building to a device in this but if you already know how to build to uh, android phone or I, uh, iphone uh, feel free to you know take the stuff that we do and uh, and go ahead and engage with that and so what we have here is we have the vuforia developer uh, portal and so you go to developer.vuforia.com and once you do that you are able to go and download their latest sdk and so the latest sdk that they have uh you'll go to downloads and then you could go and download and add it you'll first need to have a uh a license or an account and it's free so uh, feel free to engage and and log in and then download the thing that you need and then once you do that you just save the sdk here in a folder that you know after you save it you can go to unity and you go to assets and then import package and custom package and then once you do that you go to the the folder that you have already where you downloaded your package and then you select it and then you click open and it'll click import and then you want to say update And so now that you have it downloaded, the way to test is you could have this editor package folder right here next to scenes, or you go to window and you see Vuforia configuration, we'll just select that. So now in our inspector, the first thing that we need to do is we need to add our license. And so to add our license, we click add license. It'll take us to our panel or portal and you go to get development key, you could do that. And I'll call this graffiti sticker. And I'll click confirm. And these are all development keys. So you're not able to send these off to a, uh, a, a app store with these, but this is great for testing it out. 
And so I'll click copy and I'll go back to Unity and I'll just paste it. And then the last thing that we will need to do is turn off track device pose. And we'll turn that off because all this is saying is that it adds extended track device pose adds extended tracking support. And so if you're not looking at the, the image that you're trying to augment, it'll still try to have that experience play. And we don't want that. And so by turning off track device support, it says that when you aren't looking at the image, you won't try to play the experience. And, uh, and that's perfect, exactly what we want. And then lastly, since we're doing a webcam, you wanna make sure that the play mode type is also set to webcam. And so if it's not, just set it to webcam and then choose whatever webcam you wanna you want to choose. I have multiple webcams, so I always make sure to choose the right one. And then from there, uh, we are ready to move on. And so the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create our image target. And so we're gonna set up our AR work environment and we're gonna create the image target based off of our digital sticker. And so in Unity, right, we have Unity. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, right click and create a new folder. And we're gonna name that images. And after we do that, we're going to go into our folder that has our image of our sticker and we're just going to drag that in there. And so before we can use the image, we're, we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, change the settings of the image. And so you select the image, go to the inspector and where it says texture type, it says default. You want to change that to sprite or 2D UI. And once you do that, it, uh, it changes it a little bit. It looks better than what it did before and we should be good with that. So now what we'll do is we'll go to our scene and we'll go in the hierarchy and we'll, the things that we need to do first are we need to replace the main camera with an AR camera. And so all we'll have to do and what the AR camera does is it emulates the, the camera on our webcam or our phone. And so the main camera is for like game stuff, AR camera is for AR stuff. And so we'll click right click before engine and then AR camera. And then we'll delete the main camera. And then second thing is we'll right click again. We'll go to before engine and we'll click image target and we'll add that. And since the, and all the image target is, is it's saying that whatever image, whatever image is shown on our, uh, into our camera, that's what we'll augment. And so with that, right, the, we want to make sure it's going to augment our, the sticker that we have. And so we'll go into the inspector after we click the image target, we'll go into the inspector and we'll select the image texture and we'll choose the sticker that we have. And so now what you see is you'll see our sticker here, just like that. That is our sticker. Looks pretty cool. Looks pretty cool. And so now it's sort of in the database and this pretty much makes it a QR code that you know our phone would recognize. And so in order to test it, what we'll do is we'll, we'll right click and we'll just add a cube. And that cube, I'll make it a little smaller because it's really big right now. I'll make it really small so that it fits on my thing like that. And what I can do is I can make it another color. So I'll go and right click and create a new folder called materials. And in that materials folder, I'll right click again and I'll create a material. And I'll call this red. And I'll turn that to red and I'll just drag that over to my cube. It's so now I have a red cube. And so we see that we have our image target and we have our cube. In order for the image target to recognize or have the cube on it in AR, what we'll need to do is make it a child. And so what we'll do is we'll drag the cube on top of the image target and it makes it, it sort of indents it into it. So now the image target is a container that has the cube in it. And we could tell that the, the image target is a parent of the cube by this arrow sign right here. 
And so now that we have that, we can test our AR experience right now. So I'll click play. And as you can see, I have my cube. Just like that. Very simple. And the tracking is pretty good with it. And so I'm pretty pleased. And so now we can move on to the other stuff. So now that we have our AR stuff set up, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to build our assets with ProBuilder. And so essentially we'll use ProBuilder to create 3D elements of our graffiti sticker and uh, really have that come to life. So that should be really, really fun. And so if you've ever done any 3D modeling or anything like that, this should be a, this should be a fun little experience. And so what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a 3D elements of our sticker design. In order to do that, what we could do is we could have a new scene created. So just create a new scene and we'll call this graffiti 3D models. And I'll just create a new scene and then I'll just drag my sticker into the scene like that. And I'll just change it to, I think, 90 degrees so that we have a, a full sticker. And it's laying flat like that. So I'll just zero out the transforms so that it's sitting in the center of our scene. Perfect. And the reason we're doing this is because we don't, we will import all the stuff back into our AR scene, but we want to make sure that everything is good first before we start trying to like test it out on the AR stuff. And so now that we have that, we'll go through and we'll go to window and then package manager, and then we'll click unity registry. We'll go down to pro builder. Pro builder is allows you to edit and create and build geometry uh, in unity. And so what we'll do is we'll click install. And then from there, you could have some uh, import the examples and the runtime examples as well. And then if you have, if you're using any of the render pipelines, which uh, I'm not, but if you're using any of the render pipelines, you could uh, use those. Otherwise, we'll click X and we'll go to tools and we'll go to Pro Builder window. And we have our Pro Builder window. And I like to just dock that to the side there. And there's some other stuff you could play around with, with interactions and toggles and orientations and objects and all that stuff. You could. But if not, we have the simple stuff here. And so now. What I can do is I can go here, I could say have to the top, so I could right click my uh, view to the top. And I could say I have my sticker here. And I'll use this as a base. And so what I could do is I could click new shape or I could click uh, poly shape and actually I'll click poly shape. And I could go in and I could start just clicking around and creating new shapes. So the first shape that I'll do is I'll go ahead and click and I'll create, create my S.
And I can go in to start creating my S. And it's just a matter of just going through and just going from one point to the next. And if there's any curves, then try to get the curves as, as close to it as possible. It does get a little difficult with the polyline tool, but then you could close it like that. So if you want to edit any polylines, you can. And what you can do is you can subdivide. Bring it up. And then I'll click shift and I will pull it up like that. And so the first one that we have is this. I'll just put that on there. And that's my red. And so what I could do is I could go through and I could make my T. And so I'll just call this one uh, S model. And I'll go through. I'll create a new polyline, new polyline shape, and I'll try to do my T now. So I'll click that. It's just a matter of just fitting the the shape as much as possible. There's going to be some hard edges, but um, you know you can kind of work with it. So just have the lines following as closely as possible. To the edges that you have. Like that. And then from there, you can Go through and you could just extrude it up and then give it a little more space like that. And then what I'll do is I'll turn this, I'll add a new material, I'll call this one blue. And I'll turn it blue we have here and then add that to here just like that so now I have my blue and I have my red next one and I'll also change this to T model so 
uh, some errors. I don't know why some errors uh, go through there. And let's go through and I'm going to do my V now. No, I'll do my E. The E is the next one. So I'll go new poly shape. I'll zoom in a little bit. I'll just go through and start making my making my shape. So I'm just going to fit it along the edges a little bit more. I feel like I didn't really do that as great with the other two, but I have the opportunity to make up for it now. Actually, I'll, I'll keep that like that. Boom. So I have the polyline shape. I'll go through, make sure this is at zero, and then I will hold shift, click it, hold shift, and then I'll just raise up. That gives me my shape there. So then I'll duplicate the blue and I'll make that purple. And I'll change it to purple. And then I'll add it to it like that. So there's another little shape here that I, I want to add to it as well. So I'll have E model. And then I'll just create a new polyline shape and I'll go through and add this here. Now I'll click zero. Now I'll go and rotate it. Click edit polyline shape, select it, and I'll just bump it up again like that. I suppose I can move it over a little bit. So I've got an object, then move it over a little bit. And this is going to be like a little addition to the E model. So we just say E2. I'll make that a, a child of it. And then I will duplicate and I'll make this yellow, a yellow material. And that yellow material be like that. I'll drag that over, boom, now I have the yellow material. So now it's starting to come along pretty, pretty nicely. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to add my, my V. So with the V, I'll just use the top perspective like this. Just lower this down so I have more room to work with. Again, use the new polyline or poly shape tool and I will start adding some more stuff to it. And so could have done a better job with the S again, but you know, such is life. So I could also, I can always redo the S, but for now, I'm just going to focus on following the lines of this right here. So essentially the more lines you, the more points you put, the more likely you'll see that curve. And so you could find a balance of it.
And it really all is about just following the lines that you already created. Then closing it, boom. I'll go to zero, hit zero for that. Go to edit polyline shape. I will select the poly. Selecting it, so we have here, and then holding shift and just raising it up. So, hmm, what's going on here? Select that. Make sure you have it face selection, which is what I uh, forgot to do. So I'll just click zero. And then uh, have the face selection. So I'll select the face under the polyline shape tool. So edit polyline shape. And then uh, select the face, hold shift, and then just raise it up like that. And so now. What I could do is I'll click OK and then I'll add that red color to it like that. So it's starting to come along. It's very rough, but um, we could explore different ways to, to make it look a little better. So we did that and then so I'll go through and I'll say the model. And then lastly, what I'll do is I'll create this one right here. And so what I'll do is I'll go to new poly shape again. I'll go to top. Have the view be the ISO view, which is with the three lines versus the perspective view. If we don't want that, it distorts things. So we want to see a top view to make this. And then I'll just start adding my lines again. So we got the first one. And so I'll hit the polyline shape and I'll extrude it up. First I'll hit zero, then I'll hit the polyline shape, extrude it up, then I'll add the blue to it. I'll add the blue to the whole thing. Boom. Like that. And so we have E underscore to model. And then what I'll do is I'll add another model to it, the second half of it. So again, new poly shape. Start creating. Like that. We'll hit zero. Move over, I'll go to edit polyline shape. Make sure you're clicking face selection, select it, hold shift, and then lift it up. After that, I'll go through, add it to that, perfect. That's so what I'll do is I'll do E underscore two, and hyphen two like that. So now I have my my three shapes here. So if I have my graffiti sticker, I have essentially all the all the shapes that I had. And so now it's time to add the extra little elements. And these are just going to be uh, little shapes that that I'll create 
uh, very in the same in the same fashion, just creating the little shapes that I want to uh, also see augmented. So I'll click save first. I'll actually create a new empty object and I'll have this be Steve models. And then I'll just place all the Steve models in there. So I'll go ahead, click zero, 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 just to zero it out. First, the container, and then I'll put all my models in there. Like that. So now you can hide it, and it's back. So I'll click save. And so now let's create another set of polylines. So with this, I'll click the top view again, go in and I'll start making, I'll just start from the left to the right. And so I'll just start making this shape here, so just a triangle like that. And then I'll go through and make another polyline. I'll make this shape here. And then another polyline shape. And make this shape here. And I'll just be making these very quickly because these are just elements. Uh, I'll go through and rename them and all that once I finish figuring out uh, all the shapes that need to be made. So just making a whole bunch of polylines and creating these interesting shapes. So making more polyline shapes and just creating them. This is a tedious process, as you could tell, but it makes all the difference in the world once you're able to, to move and animate these and see them come to life. And so it's all in the details. Go through again, just making more shapes.
So I only have a few more that I need to do. I need to do this, this, and this. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. It's got that shape. We'll get this shape next. And last but not least, I got this star. Like that. So now I have all these. Just going to make them all zero out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude them all at the same time. So instead of extruding them all at uh, one at a time, I'll go ahead and click the face tool and I'll there. And I could extrude these out. By selecting them all. Holding select. And right click or holding shift and selecting all the shapes that you want. And after that, oh, oops, last one right here. There you go. Then we hold shift again and we just lift them up. And since they aren't as pronounced, uh, I won't make them as big. I'll make them as raised like that perfect so now I'll just go through and I'll start coloring them so before that I am going to add a another color so I'll call this orange and I think that's the last color that I needed it's just the orange oh and I think I'll I'll have I'll have a black color as well so I'll duplicate again and I'll have black. And then I'll have that be black. And so now, I remember I had this be the black color. This was some orange. Got the purple, yellow. And I'll just change this back to my top view so it's easier to look at and see. And I just start adding these in. So yellow. Some more yellow, add some yellow, orange, and purple. Add some purple here as well. I had some yellow, more yellow, more yellow, even more yellow. Then I had some orange, yellow, Add some red, add some purple, some blue here, some orange here, some red, and then finally some purple. And so now I'll go through and I'll say, hey, this is a star. Uh, this one right here is a is an arrow. Uh, 
I had, um, you know, some triangles. I'll just call that try. And then try underscore two. Try underscore three. And you essentially could just go through and you could just have these be just random numbers and shapes. And so I'll just call this shape score one. I'll just go through and just name these shapes uh, accordingly. It's like I forgot this one, so I'll just add that to it. Yep. And voila, there we go. So now I have all my models. I could go through and I could say Steve's models, yeah. I could create a new empty object and say these are extra models. And I could go through and have all of these be childs of it. And so now I have my sticker edited and I have my you know, obviously the sticker. I got my models here for Steve. And then I have uh, my extra models here, like that. So here's all my models that I could play around with. So not too bad, not too bad. See all the models that I created and then all the models that I have for the arm, for the, for the letters, like that. Pretty pleased with it. And so now what I could do is I could have some custom colors for these if I wanted. And so if I wanted to add some effects to it, uh, have these uh, models be multiple colors, there's a lot of stuff I could do with this. And so what I'll do is I'll use poly brush with it uh, to add some color to the 3D elements. And so you see, how we're back in here, right? We have all of our stuff. And what I'll do is I'll just hide this and we have all of our elements. What I could go through and I could go to window, I could go to package manager, and instead of Pro Builder, I could use Polybrush. And Polybrush allows you to uh, paint and sculpt uh, some essentially with geometry and stuff. And so, what I could go through is I could click install.
And so after it finishes installing, you could go ahead and add the shader examples as well. And the shader example allows you to, um, you know, use the shader to actually color stuff. And so you actually need the shader unless you want to make your own that supports polybrush. And so now after that, what I can do is I can go into one of my shaders. So I'll say the red shader and I could go from standard and I could go to polybrush and I can convert this to a vertex color like that. And what that does is it allows me to uh, use polybrush. And so I'll go to tools and polybrush and I'll add my polybrush window to the bottom of my pro builder window as we see here. And we have some settings here. So we have settings to uh, modify different things. And so if I wanted to increase or modify these, I could. You go through, change the strength. And go through and modify this with whatever, you know, whatever sculpting that I wanted. Uh, if I had more vertices, I could actually do that. But right now I don't. If I wanted to smooth stuff out, I could. So I could go through and click that and smooth it and modify it. And notice how it'll modify it a little bit. It'll tweak it. If I wanted to color, which I can, go through and I could start coloring. With my brush, if I go through, have my radius be a little bigger. Now, as you can see, when I add it, I'm able to make a little bit of uh, color added to it. And so if I wanted to have it be like a black, go through and change it a little bit, give it some extra colors. I wanted this to be more of a green or a white. I wanted it to have a little bit more of a white do that but right now it's not going to let me because of my material so if I modify the material and I say hey material I want you to be a light alpha actually not a light alpha I can just make this be white turn that to white and then start coloring again and you'll see how it, it allows me to change the color now And so what I could do is I could give it a combination of white and red. And so I'll go back over to the color here, and then I'll start just coloring it to a little bit of a white and a, and a red. Like that. Like that. And then the same with this, right? I could change all these to polybrush. Vertex color, poly brush. And I'll change this to white. And then I could go and change this to yellow. And I could give it a little splash color. So same thing with blue, right? Let's go ahead, change this to poly brush, vertex color, change this to white. And now I could go to the blue color and I could give it a little bit of a pizzazz right there. And I could kind of add the blue to the other ones too, if I want it.
like that. So now it's starting to starting to look pretty interesting, right? And lastly, what I could do is I could obviously change the purple. So go to again poly brush on the shader. We'll change this to white. And then we will get a purple color, which I'll use right here. Get a purple. And it's time to add it to my colors here. Start adding a little bit more to it. Going. I know that there is a blue here, so I'll start adding some blues. Maybe I'll add a blue to the bottom of that. Add a blue there. Maybe I want to add just a little bit of a red tip there. And I don't know, I think a a little bit of a red tip there. And yeah, I mean, this looks good. We'll just add some yellow to here. Boom. And up here, I'll just add some orange because I think orange will be good. And so now I have some, I have some stuff there. And so what we could do is I can make it metallic Give it a little bit of a gloss. Like that. And we're solid. That is our color. And so a challenge for you, right, is you can create more custom colors. You can make those materials custom. You can add them to it. You could add gold. There's a lot of different things that you could do. And creating those custom colors allows for you to make things a little more flashier. And so we could go and create more materials, uh, add those colors to it, then add those to our 3D elements. We'll just do that real quick. So I'm on the materials panel here, right? I could go and I could create a new material. And what if I just wanted to make a gold? So I'll just say gold. I could uh, focus on this panel right here and I could say, okay, we have so many different things. We're using the poly brush material, but what if I just wanted to use a, uh, just a standard material? I could do that. And then from there, I'll say, I want to make a gold. So go to gold this is kind of a yellowish like that. And I could bump up the metallic and I could bump up the smoothness if I want. And what if I wanted to give it a little bit of an emission? I could do that, give it a little bit of a, a red emission like that. Yeah. So now it sort of shimmers a little bit. And the more metallic you make it, the more it will shimmer when you move it around. Make it less metallic, then obviously it'll be kind of glossy, like more of a satin. And then this makes it more of a, uh, you know, more of a, like a shiny metal. And with the smoothness down, then it just makes it more flat, like a matte color, like that. So you can see it like that, right? You can see how shiny it gets too. But let's say if I added an emission to it, and I wanted to have it be a very, like, 
kind of like glowing. Change the color. So now I have my I have my color now, right? And so then I could add this to some of the elements. So if I wanted to add that to the star, I could do that. Or even if I didn't want to, yeah, I'll add that to the star. And then I'll add that to some of the other yellow elements that I have. Boom. And so now I have that extra emission. I'll add that to this one right here. So it balances out the other ones. And if I wanted to make this more transparent, I could do a transparency and go through and make it kind of transparent. All I think is I would have to turn off the emission though, so that it uh, so that it appears. And so I guess I will take off the transparent and I'll just keep it like this. And so that's how you make a custom material is you can go to a whole bunch of different things, but really it's just going to standard and then playing around with the different stuff. Smoothness, metallic, the albedo for the color, and then adding some emission if you want that. And so now what we can do is we can add this to our AR scene, and then we can start kit bashing assets to add more elements to, the, to it and make it come to life even more. And so now that we have our stuff, right? We have our 3D models and the graffiti tags and everything. What I'll do is I'll just turn this into a, turn the model and all the stuff in the model, the extra models and everything. I'll make that a child of my sticker. Just make it a child of it so that when I hide the sticker, the graffiti sticker, everything is there. And then after that, I'll turn this into a prefab. And so go to the assets, right click, and I'm going to go to create folder and I'll call this prefabs. And what a prefab does is it, all it does is just make it a component that you could use in other scenes very easily. And if you make any modifications, then you could modify it very quickly. And so I'll go through and I'll just turn this into a prefab and then I'll make this blue. And so I'll just save that and I'll go into my other scenes and I'll go into the graffiti AR art scene and I'll go to my prefabs, open this up and I'll add my graffiti sticker like that. And so one thing before we get started, I'll just change the name to graffiti uh, AR target right there and then to be organized I'll create a empty game object and call that AR content and then what I'll do is I'll add my graffiti into that and so since it's already zeroed out I'll just make it smaller and I'll just make that the same size as my graffiti image target right here Oops. Make sure to just make the image target smaller. Like that. And so now that we're done with that, what I could do is I could actually turn off the sprite render. And if I do that, it'll get rid of the actual other image that we have. So boom. And so now when I lift it up, I have just the image here. And so now with that, right, let's go ahead and I will go ahead and get rid of this cube because I don't need it anymore. And what I can do is I could say, hey, let's test this out and see if it works. So because it's a child of the game object, it should work and everything should be part of it. Now the sprite render are off, so let's give it a check. Testing. And as you can see, this it shines. Whoa, look at that. 
that material really makes it shine based on how you move it in the light. So it's augmented. And so now I'm really pleased with the, with the shine that, that that had. That's really, really nice. And so now what I can do is we could start adding some extra elements to it. And so we can go to the asset store. We'll go on and go search online for assets. And what I could do is I'll say, hmm, huh, let's have a, see if I can find a star. So I go to free assets and see if I can find like some stars or any, any elements. Ooh, simple gems. That looks good. So I can check that out. Simple gems. I think I, I definitely like those. Those look really cool. So I'll add those customizable simple gems and I'll go open in unity. Simple gems, I'll click download, import, and import again. So let's see what else we could find. I really like those simple gems. Uh, the polygon starter kit is always really good. Uh, it has some really cool stuff in there. And I don't know, I, I don't think I really need I don't think I, yeah, no, I, I don't think I'll need any of that stuff in there. And so I'll go back and let's see, we want, I mentioned in my document that I wanted uh, some fireworks and some glowing stuff, some 3D text, got that, uh, looping beat, um, arrows, stars. Let's see if we have some arrows. Arrows, we'll go to free assets. Um, what if I just say 3D shapes? No, doesn't look like I have. If I just search for shapes. Yeah, yeah I guess there's some stuff, but No, I don't, I don't really see any, any shapes that I want. And so I have my, I have the shapes that I made, so that's not too bad. And then uh, what if I say like, uh, VFX. We have some, you know, cartoon effects. I'll go to free assets. So it looks like we have some explosions and some Sprite muzzle flashes? Hmm. That might be cool. I, yeah, I might actually try that. Sprite muzzle flashes. Yeah, that'll be cool. Change it to different colors and stuff. Yeah, definitely going to add that. So open in Unity. Sprite muzzle flashes. Click add to that. Click import, and we'll import. And then afterwards, we'll say uh, beats. We'll go to free. And we'll just try to find a some free sampler space inspired music. Um, various genre music. <laughs>
That's interesting. Um, so if I go back and go to my beats again, and we'll say trip hop. That sounds interesting. What's this all about? this I like that so I'll click my trip hop beats <laughs> trip hop music I'll open in the unity editor and it's a large package but we'll be able to pick some pretty cool sounds from there I'll click import import again Okay, so now we got that. We'll go back to our scene. And so we have our image target, right? We have the image target here. And we have a whole bunch of different stuff that we got, right? So we have orange sky, which has our prefabs. These prefabs are all the different gems that we have available. So we have more stuff. All I'll do is I'll create a new empty object for um, other objects like that. And I'll just put my hard sky in there and I'm not sure where it went. Zero, zero, and zero. And it's probably really big. So I'll just make it smaller. It's like that. Yeah, it's huge. Oh man, it's really big. So I'll do that. So that. I can make it just much smaller than that. And what I could do is I could have beveled star and I could select the cube, cuboid, maybe some diamonds and yeah so I'll add these all to it add these all to it and then I'll just shrink these down really small or just small enough to fit in my thing and then I'll click zero 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 and then they're all sort of facing up so what I'll do is I'll have them face the other way and then I'll just make them smaller again and I could start adding them individually to different elements right so boom let that be there let that be down here let that be up here that works and then what if I just give it some depth right so what if this was up here This is back, this is up, this is back, this is out here, and I'll, I'll move it forward, I'll move this forward here, like that. I'll move this up. So it doesn't really get in the way of it. Like that. All right. And so with the materials, the materials look really interesting. I don't know why it has those types of materials. But what I could do, again, we made our own materials before. And so we had that gold material that we added to this. And so what I could do is, what if I had like a silver material? So if we had like a silver material as well, that would be cool. So silver, and then we'll say like, uh, first I'll just change it. So make it like a white. We'll have the silver with the, like a 
like a blue emission. That would be really cool. Add that to some of the, the diamonds and stuff. And then we had like a a bronze. And the bronze would be more of like an orange that we know. And then it would have more of a like more of a brownish reddish tint to it. Like that, yeah. That was like a bronze star. Let this thing be bronze. And maybe this we could have like a have an emerald. And the emerald could be obviously like a green. And then with that green, we'll have it be like with a yellowish tint to it. Greenish yellowish tint. And we'll make it just less shiny. But Place that on that. Boom. And then lastly, we could add our sounds, right? So I'll create a new empty object. We'll say audio manager. And with the audio manager, I'll add a component and I'll just type in audio for audio source like that. And then I could go into my trip hop and I could start listening to sounds. like that. And so before we do that, what I'll do is I'll just test it just to make sure. So now that everything is in there, click OK. And hmm, it's doing some interesting stuff, huh? And it might be because of the assets that we added to it. And so these assets have these scripts. And so what we could do is I could just turn off the scripts. So if we turn off these animated scripts here, we say is scaling, well maybe we just turn off is scaling and is floating. Um, we could see what happens. So we'll click save. Play. Yeah, there we go. And now it's working the way that we want it to. And so for some reason, my sprite renderer is, is still giving me some sprites. So what I'll do is I'll click none for this so that it doesn't have a sprite to render. And so then I'll click save again and I'll click go and we'll see how it goes. And so now you can see it doesn't show the sprite render anymore. And so what we'll do is we'll get to the we'll get to the actual sound and stuff later and let's just focus on the visuals. And so what I'll do is I'll I'll just delete this audio manager and we'll worry about that later. And so now what we can do is we can 
add animation to it. So we already added some animated elements to it already. So let's go ahead and animate our experience with uh, the Unity Timeline. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to go to Window, and we go to Package Manager, and from the Package Manager, we go to Unity Registry, and we go to Timeline like this. And so if you already have Timeline installed, uh, you don't have to worry about it, but if you do need to install it, feel free to install it. After you do that, we go to Window, we go to Sequencing, right here, we go to Timeline. And we could dock this down at the bottom here. And this is our Unity Timeline that gives us the opportunity to, to create animations. And so what I could do now is under my AR content, I could click uh, create a new empty object and I'll call it uh, graffiti timeline like that and then I'll just make sure it's under my AR content like that and then when I click graffiti timeline I'll click create and I'll go to assets and I'll just create a new folder so actually before I do that I'll just create a new folder in my assets panel right now. So just right click, create folder, and I'll say animation. So now when I click graffiti timeline, I'll click create, I'll go to animation, and I'll have my animation timeline. And so before we get started with animating, the couple of things we want to do, we want to make sure that this uh, lock is clicked. And the reason is, is so that when I click on other objects, it doesn't take away my timeline. If I don't do that, then when I click on Graffiti Timeline, it appears, but if I click on other objects, it disappears, and it wants me to make a new one. And so uh, this playable director is where the timeline exists, and any game object that doesn't have one, it will suggest that you make one for it. Uh, but if you only want to use one timeline, which is what we're doing, you actually just go ahead and click the lock button. And so now any other game objects you want to touch uh, won't uh, take away the timeline. So that's one thing. And then the second thing is we'll hit the, the gear clog and we're going to go to frame rate. And we're going to change it from 60 frames to actually 24. And what that will do is we'll change the frame rate. So instead of it being 60 frames uh, per second, we'll have 24 frames per second. And that means it's more of a standard animation thing. And, uh, and that's typically just what I use uh, for this because it makes the file sizes a lot smaller and it doesn't require a lot of processing power to render. And so that's, a, that's just what I like to do. And so with that, I will go through and, you know, we'll start animating some assets. And so first things first, what I want to do is I have all my different uh, model assets in here, right? And I could move my... Uh, console and projects folder to the side. So I'll move the projects folder to the side here. So it gives me a little more room. And then my console, I could add to this console right here. So it just gives me a little more room to work with. And so, yeah, let's start animating. So you could animate things individually and you could turn things on and off, which is pretty good. Uh, so we have these things called activation tracks, which turns things on and off. We have animation tracks, which allow you to animate. We have audio tracks, which we'll use later. And we have control tracks and stuff. So it's a lot of stuff we could do. Uh, for this, let's say that I want to have essentially all of the animation that I have here. I wanted to sort of pop in in, in different parts of it. And so first things first. What I want to do is say, I want this experience to be, you know, around 30 seconds. And so for the 30 seconds, I'll go through and it doesn't allow me to uh, have as much stuff on it yet. So we'll, we'll worry about the seconds later. Uh, right now, let's just focus on adding some stuff to our scenes. So I'll say Steve models, I'll create an activation track for it. And then I'll say extra models, I'll create an activation track for that. And then other objects, I'll create an activation track for that. 
and I'll say that the Steve models one, I want this to be uh, 30 seconds. So I'll change it to seconds and I'll just drag this out till I get to that 30 second mark. It'll just take a little while. That's mainly because I want this whole experience to be 30 seconds. And so now that I have that, I could go through and say, okay, 30 seconds right there is where we'll finish. So notice how when I'm when I have the activation track, it shows everything, and when I don't have it on, it hides everything. So now with that, I'll say that I want to animate different individual models in it. And so I could go through and each one of these different things can have its own uh, animation track in it. And so I could animate these all individually by dragging them all down and click animation track for each one of them. And now I have animation tracks for all of my models. So I'll just move the other ones out of the way just so I don't have to deal with them right now. And before I get started, I could actually turn, create a track group right here. So I'll create track group. And what the track group will do is it'll just allow me to organize things. So I'll just say, uh, Steve models track group. And I could select all these tracks and I could add them to my track group, like that. And so, it makes it easier to maneuver. And so, what I wanna do is I want to actually go through and uh, create different animations that, that happen with this. And so, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna have them come in and then exit out. And so in order to do that, I just go through and I could click each one of these record buttons and I could just animate them all together. And I could say the position and the rotation and the scale for each one of these. I'll just click them all, position, rotation, and scale. I'll click add key add key and add key and there's all going to be keyframes here and so i could go to the end and i could say at the end as well we'll click add key add key and add key for the position rotation and scale and so now that i have those what i want is i could say with this I can move these individually and I could say, okay, this comes in from here and it'll have a rotation of this and it'll scale from there. And so that's the S. So when I move it, it comes in like that. And maybe I want to give it a little bit more of a rotation moving forward like that. So that's pretty cool. So then I could go through and say, at the end, I wanted to uh, animate out. And so I wanted to rotate, or I wanted to rotate this way, and I want it to get smaller. And I'll have it rotate the other way as well. And I'll have it exit out like that. Like that. So let's say I want it just to be a little smaller. Or I just want it to be really small actually. So I could do that on both that side. And that side. So now that I have that, I can move on to the T model. And so the T model, I'll say, starts off rotated 
and it could be obviously smaller. And then I'll have it come coming up from there. The E, I could have that coming from down here and I could have the little e coming from over here and I could again have it rotate forward edged out and down here I'll have the v at the V, rotate up. I think it will be cool to have it come from back here. And then again, be smaller. I have it come from the top right. Then now the other E, uh, they're coming out from here. I'll have it rotate up and then the E model 2 I'll have it rotate the other way like this and then we'll have it come out this way so when you see it When you see them all, so it comes out like that. And it comes in. Like that. And so what we could do is we could go ahead and save it. Bloop, bloop, bloop for all these by just clicking the record and clicking save like that. And so I mentioned that we want to have it animate out and a way you could do that is by copying these keyframes and we could do that by going to edit and animation window and we could actually go through and say, okay, these keyframes that we have, we could copy all these, copy literally, and then we could go over here, and we could paste them. And then we could go to where it says 30, and we could just move those over like that. So now it goes exactly where you want it to go for each one of the objects. And so we could do that for each one of these models here. So edit an animation window, copy, we've got a paste, and we have it there. Perfect. So if you have it at the spot already, then all you have to do is just go in, edit an animation window, copy this, and paste it. And it'll paste it exactly where it needs to be. So for the V, edit an animation window, copy, paste, bingo. And we have a little bit more. So edit an animation window for this one, copy, paste. And then for this, edit an animation window, copy, and then paste. And so now that we have that, let's we'll save. And so now we want to go ahead and test it out before we start uh, adding some extra stuff to our animation. So in order to do that, we need to connect our animation timeline to our image target. And so in order to do that, we go to image target and actually just realize that, there we go. Uh, we go to image target and we say go to the on target found and on target lost. All this says is that on target found means that when the camera sees the image target, 
it'll play something or it will do something. And then when it doesn't see the image target for on target lost, then it will stop doing whatever it's doing. Or it'll do something else, which ultimately it'll be us stopping the animation. So we click the plus sign for both of these. We go to our graffiti timeline. And we'll just add that to both of the, of the object containers. Then we'll go to no function and we'll go to playable director and we'll click play. And that says that just play the play the animation timeline. And so now when we don't want it to play, we'll just go to pause. Pause animation timeline like that. And so when we click save, what we can do is we could play it and we'll test it. And so now, let's see if it works. Boom. Look at that. So we'll just get to the 30 second mark and then after the 30 seconds, it should animate out. Oh snap, I forgot about the, the activations that we had. Totally forgot about those. Just like that. And so if we wanted it to loop, right, we go to our timeline Notice how there's a wrap mode. What we could do is we could change it to a uh, loop, which means that it'll loop to the next, it'll keep looping indefinitely. If we want it to be none, then it'll stay at the end here. If we want it to be hold, it'll, uh, it'll, well no, if we have it at none, then it'll go back to zero at the end. And if we have it at hold, then it'll stay at 30 at the end. And so what we'll do is we'll have it at loop. Just cause. And so from there, what we can do is we could start adding some extra stuff to our timeline. And so we did the, the models. Now we could add the extra elements. These extra elements here are interesting. And so what I'll do is I'll create a new track group and I'll call these extra Elements. I'll just lift it up here and each one of these I'll just drag in to here as an animation track and what I'll do is I'll say from two to 20, 28 I suppose I'll have these exist, they'll be open, and essentially I'll just go through and I'll animate all these in. Selecting all these, I'll just start the animation. And you can animate a lot of stuff, you just need to make sure that you know all the stuff you're animating. So it's definitely a lot of objects. Definitely have my work cut out for me. But what I'll do is I'll select them all. And the first thing I want to do is make sure that I know where all my different uh, objects are. And essentially I'll say I want them to have a starting pose so position add rotation add and then scale add that's where I want to start off at and then I'll have my finish pose here and what I could do is I could have the finish pose be here so then I'll just animate these over And I suppose I could have a uh, add a key here just so it, it makes it easier for me to find the different uh, poses that I want to end up at. So this is, we'll just add this key just so it shows up on the animation timeline when we're playing it. And so now that I have that, I'll go in and I'll just find ways to just move and modify these things. So. I'll just have this come from out here. 
this comes from out here. Uh, this triangle, yep, that one. This one, that can come from out there. This, down, that, over here, this, kind of over here, that. I'll just have all these sort of coming at, at different angles. The triangle, I think coming from over there. This, probably over here too. That is already up. That could come from this angle. That could come from all the way over here. This could come from, I guess down here. That here, that here, that here, this out here. This will have that coming from up here. This will also be over here. And we'll have this coming from over here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll just have all these be just like randomly rotated. So I'll just get the rotation tool and I'll just sort of have these rotated here and here and and all these random just locations, right? And what I could do is I could just randomly select some and just rotate them. Randomly select some other ones. Rotate them here. Randomly select some other ones. Rotate them here. And then what I could do is also have them just scale. And so the different scales. And different scales like that. So now they come together, boom. Like that. And so now that I have those down, I could actually just stop recording. Because now it's just a matter of creating the transitions and then having it exit. There's a lot of them, as you can see. So I'll just click stop. And I can just go to through each of the, go through each of them in their animation window. And so I'll just hit edit an animation window and I'll just go ahead and dock this to the bottom. And so whenever I click on a new animation, it'll go ahead and choose the next one. So I could go through here and say edit animation window and it changes it like that. So I'll just start off with this one, edit an animation window. I know that my ending, I want it to be here. And so now, I'll say copy and then paste like that. And then I'll have this one be copy. And I'll go over here and just say paste. Like that. Or another way to do it is actually copying both of these. Just copy and then going here and then clicking paste. Copy and then pasting it. And then from there, going and actually just reversing this like that. So now it goes back up. And then I'll say that I'll extend this out to four. 
and that'll be out to four. And we're good. So I'm off to the next one. Add an animation window, click copy. See, hit paste. And with it, I'll just move this over here and I'll move this over there. Two down, any more to go. Right, so I have that. Looks like I forgot to do this one up here. So I'll click edit an animation window, copy this, paste it, and then modify it here and modify it here. So now we can just take a look and see how it's coming along. You know, some things are coming in like that, boom. Some things are going in a little bit slower. And then it has that variation as well. So again, I'll go back to where I want them all to, to exit. And so I have these already done. So now let's edit some more. Boom, boom. And then exit out and exit out.
Okay, and so now we have all of our animations for each one of these different objects. We have all of them done. Like that. So all of our pieces coming in. And then we have these coming in. And so lastly, what we could do is we could have our other objects. We could just have those come in after these. Like that. So we just played around with animation tracks, uh, track groups, activation tracks, and we're able to get something that was going. So you could preview it in your animation window or the timeline by scrubbing through the timeline. And then after that, we could go ahead and test, test it. So click play to test. And then it looped just like that. That's pretty cool. And so now we have our we have our animation going. And so last thing that's on our list is to make it more immersive, right? So we'll add some visual effects, we'll add some sounds, and we'll really want to make this experience pop. And so really make it come to life. And so remember, we downloaded some new sounds and we downloaded some uh, visuals that we could add to it. And so let's actually add that stuff to it now. And so in our list, right, we have, and I'll just get rid of this animation window because we don't need it anymore. And I'll just clear my console. And so we have our timeline, right? And you can recall that we, we started making a uh, game object for a sound. Well, we'll go ahead and just make another one. So create empty, we'll do, audio manager and so we'll just add that to our AR content and we'll add a new component again we want to call this an audio source and what we could do with this now is we have the opportunity to make this an audio source for the whole timeline and so instead of adding an audio clip here we could add an audio at our audio manager here and have an audio track so just dragging and dropping creating an audio track the next thing is we want to turn it off, turn off play on awake because we want it to be attached to our timeline. So whenever the timeline plays, it'll play the sound as well. And so lastly, we'll go over to our sounds and we'll go to, I'll go to trip hop because that's where my sounds are. And I like this history, this history repeats one. And so I'll just go ahead and play it. And that's a slapper. <laughs> but uh yep i'll go ahead add it and i'll just drag that clip drag the clip from my assets onto my timeline like that and you'll see it's much longer right so what we could do is oh wow this is really long so what we'll do is we'll actually go through and i'll just make it smaller by dragging it over from the edge and so now this is what we have and so let's actually go ahead and play it And actually, I could actually sync this up a little bit so that it plays right when it, right when it hits that beat.
just like that. And I can just have this finish off that, that beat like that. And it can just sort of play without visuals. Yeah, and there we go. Now it's now it's this loop that we have. It's a pretty decent loop now. So now there we go. We have our sound. And so again, we had we had some other stuff that we downloaded too, which was really interesting. Uh, so if we could find it. It should be our sprite muzzle flare. All right, we had some sprite muzzle flares. And so if I make my project section a little bit bigger, go to my sprite muzzle flares, and we have, uh, there's some blue ones. And these are all just like sprites, right? So I have some blue ones, some red ones, there's a, there's a lot of different ones that we could use. The Uzi, the AF1, F2, F3, tons of them. And so what I'll do is I'll just have, um, when I say animation sprites, so I'll just create a new thing called animation sprites. I'll just create an empty container for that, and I'll just add that to my AR content. And then what I could do is I could start adding these different sprites together. And so these are actually image sequences. So each one of these is a different sequence. So what I could do is I could select all of these, and what I'll do is I'll add these all to it at the same time. And what it does is it creates a, a, an animated, animated asset. And so I could go to my animations folder that I created, and I'll just say, um, Flash Sprite 1, I'll just do underscore 1, and that'll be my first splash Flash Sprite. And then I'll just make it smaller. I'll add that to my animation sprites. I'll Have this be zero, this is zero, this is zero, and then I'll just make this easier to see. Like that. So I'll move it around. Rotate it up. I can give it a little bit of depth, right? So I have it sort of popping out a little bit. It looks like there's a little bit of an emission, so that's pretty cool. Let's have it pick out. I'll have this one sort of bang out here. So now I got I got one. One sprite working as an animated asset. And so essentially it has an animator on it. And so when I when I essentially have the play button going, it'll 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 play. And so let's actually give that a shot now. see it's sort of shooting out and playing right now. Just like that. So that's pretty cool. So the next thing that I could do is I could start adding some more. So I have a blue one. Let's do a green one and I'll do like a green five. So I'll select all these. Add it in there. I go to my assets, flight spray or flash sprite two, and I'll just add that there. I'll just go ahead and add like I want to say five. I'll just do two of each color. 
So uh, EF I have EF5 already. So I'll add a EF7 and go to animated assets. I'll do splash part three. Um, and then I'll have EF9. That's a pretty cool one. I'll add that to it. And I'll have assets, animation, flash bright four. And I'll just add these to the list. And I'll just edit these later. It's just sort of a, it's a chore just adding them to it. Um, I like this Uzi. So I'll add the Uzi. And I'll have this be my flash bright five. In the green, I have one, five, so let's do two. Let's do two. Yeah, let's do two. So I'll just drag that in. Assets, animation, flash bright six. Yep. And then the purple, I'll have a Four. We'll do. I'll do six and ten. Yeah, so I'll do six for this one. Assets animation. And this will be flash break seven. And then last but not least, I'll go into the red, and I'll have this be ten. And drop that in. Animation. Flash bright. Eight, like that and then I'll add these to it as well boom and so now what I can do is I already have my first sprite here so now I could just modify these uh, and scale them earlier so I'll just scale them all at the same time so that I'm not being overly tedious with it and then I'll add them to my list right there. And then I can now move them around and add them. So what I'll do is I'll make it a little bit bigger and I'll have them rotated and rotated around here. That way I can utilize them a little bit, a little bit better. And so now, I'll just go ahead and start dragging and dropping. So, rotate, let's move this over. Let's move this down here. And just rotate it a little bit like that. Got this one. This one will go up here. This one will go up here like this. I'll just rotate this one. Rotate this one like this. Uh, this one can be down here. Rotate. Rotate again. This one, I suppose I could put this over here. So this one, I have, yep, I have that right there. And then the other one, I have this one. Start coming up here. And I have the Uzi. Uh, this one here, perfect.
And so if I wanted to control this, I could actually bring my animations into my timeline again. So I'll just say um, animation sprites. So what I'll do is I'll create a new track group. Then animation sprite. Like that. I could add these all to it. So boom, animation track. And then if I go to my projects, which I had here, I just add these to this, go to my projects, and I go to where all my animation timelines are. Each one of these is a, a different uh, sprite. And so I could just go down the list and I could say, this is sprite one. This goes to sprite two. This goes to sprite three. Let me see if I can get these names right. Yeah, so these are all good names. Uh, goes to sprite four. Goes to sprite five. Goes to sprite six. Goes to sprite seven and goes to sprite eight and so i could go to the inspector and i could say you know this is on hold or i could change these all to uh to have these loop and so in order to do that what i'll do is i'll just select a sprite notice how nothing's really working right now and so i could go to loop and it'll start working now so I'll just go to each one of these and I'll say loop. Loop. Essentially all of these I could just select. So I could just select them all, have it go loop and loop like that. So now we could see it all working. And so with this one, I can modify it a little bit, add these coming out a little bit more, and I can rotate it, rotate it again, and then it move out again, they come up. So a lot of the ones that I want to have come up, just do that and have it sort of shine out that way. This one here can come up. This one can come up too. Uh, actually, you know, bring this down. This one, we could bring up and rotate a little bit more. Like that. You know, it's a it's a lot of stuff happening right now. <laughs> but I mean this is this is where this is what it's at, right? And so with that, I could create an activation track for the animation sprites. And so I'll create an activation track. And so we could say that this is, this comes in the middle. And so when we play it, and so I'll have it play like around here. Like that. 
And so now I have my visual effects. I have all the animations that we have. There's these objects here. We could possibly, hmm, maybe we could make these rotate. And so having these other objects here, you give them some rotation. So we say animation track, and it's just for this container for all the other objects. And so I could say it can start rotating like this. So we'll start off with the rotation here, add key, and then we'll say it rotates like that. Then it rotates like that. Then it rotates like this. And then it'll rotate all the way to that three, that 380. Right there. And so now let's give it a shot. We'll click the save button, save that recording. We have our animation, we have our other objects. I'll add that right there. Other objects, we have our sound, we have our animation with our sprites, we have our models, we have our extra elements. We we did a lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff here. And so now we have an experience that we can, we can share. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I won't maximize. I'll say play, maximize on play. And so here we go. So there we go. And that is what we got now. Man, we, we actually did it, right? We added, we created an image target. We did some animation. We did some visual effects, added some sounds, particles, all that jazz, right? Deal off it. And then we we're able to create it and turn it into a augmented gra graffiti sticker. And so I'm pretty pleased with what we were able to come up with. And I'm excited to see what you are able to come up with yourself. And so to wrap this up, right, we explored a lot of different things. We explored what is graffiti, uh, how to make graffiti stickers using the rendering process. And then we turned the sticker into a digital work of art. And then we explored Unity for creating AR experiences. And then we figured out how to bring physical art to life with animation, visuals, and sounds. We even did some 3D modeling with some basic tools to turn our uh, shapes of our letters and everything into essentially, you know, 3D, different 3D models we can animate and we could uh, really make move and come to life. And so it was a journey and we hopefully were able to explore some interesting things along the way. I'm super excited and pleased with what uh, we were able to come up with. And I really hope that you learned a lot from this. And so again, 
I really appreciate your time and being able to uh, go on this journey with me, this creative journey that allows you to explore art and technology all at the same time and create something that is uh, very, very interesting. You know, I would say it's non-traditional, but it's very interesting. A turning, making graffiti come to life. And uh, it's something that I have always been enamored with and being able to combine all of those skill sets into one thing. Uh, from illustration to animation to color to sound design to visual effects all of that for something that uh really you know really stands out and so again i really appreciate all the time and thank you for joining me on this lovely adventure and i really hope to uh introduce you to some new art artistic approaches and and tools and and software um in the future and so feel free to check out the other courses that I have on exploring uh, the intersections of art, technology, and uh, creativity. And again, my name is Stephen Christian, uh, an immersive artist that loves to create stuff that empowers education and entertains. And hopefully this met the mark for you. And so without further ado, have a good one.